Hello everyone. Chocolate is one of the most popular food type and flavor in the world. And many food stuffs involving chocolate exist. Particularly desserts including cakes, puddings, mousse, brownies and chocolate chip cookies. In today's session, we'll talk about what is chocolate, how chocolate is made and what are the types. Chocolate is not only one of the world's most popular confections, it is also a wonderful medium of decorated work ranging from simple garnishes for desserts to elaborate showpieces. Many pastry chefs make a specialty of chocolate work and become well known for their imaginative and skillful pieces. Because of its composition, chocolate is difficult to work with. It is sensitive to temperature and moisture. Proper melting and cooling require accurate temperature control. The origin of the chocolate, as stated by various resources, says that it originated from Mexico and then it got popularized by Spain and the two other various countries. It is obtained from Theobroma cocoa tree. It is bartered during the 16th century, commonly came to be known as the gold for the new world. The chocolate is good for heart diseases and Africa as the largest producer of cocoa trees. Let's talk about how chocolate is produced and or how chocolate is manufactured. The steps of producing chocolate includes removing the chocolate liquor from the chocolate beans, developing flavor and consistency through the process of conching, tempering the chocolate to increase its resilience to temperature changes and finally molding the chocolate into the finished product. The steps involved in the manufacturing of chocolate are harvesting, fermentation, drying, roasting, winnowing, grinding, conching, tampering and molding. The first step we'll discuss about is harvesting. The processes that occur on the plantation can have a significant effect on the quality and flavor of the chocolate. Every chocolate bar you have ever eaten began its life as a pod on the cocoa tree Theobroma cocoa. Each pod contains 30 to 45 cocoa beans encased in a sticky white pulp. The beans are made up of two parts, a dark nut known as the nib and a papery shell. The chocolate process begins with the pods being cut down from the trees and split open. Now comes the another step, fermentation. The beans are then scooped out of the pod and are left to ferment with the pulp for about a week. The chemical changes that take place during fermentation turn the beans from yellowish to brown and begin to develop the flavor. Fermentation kills the beans, preventing them from germinating later and also develops flavor that are essential to tasty chocolate. Only the fermented seeds are referred to as cocoa beans. Now the step of drying. After fermentation or fermenting, the beans are dried in the sun where moisture is reduced from 50% to between 5 to 7%. This reduces the weight of the beans and make them less susceptible to molds. Roasting. Once they have dried, the beans leave the plantation and are shipped to the factory. The first step is to roast the beans. Roasting accomplishes the following goals. Firstly, it develops the flavor of the chocolate. By roasting the beans, we develop those precursors into actual flavors. Heating the beans produces a series of chemical reactions known as the Maillard reactions, in which amino acids and sugars react to form all sorts of tasty chemicals. Roasting also drives off the more volatile acids that are naturally present in the cocoa beans. Secondly, roasting kills bacteria. The beans have just spent more than a week outside of the pod at the plantation, either fermenting or drying in the open air. Anything left out for that long in a tropical atmosphere is practically guaranteed to have some sort of microbes hanging around it. Thirdly, roasting also puffs up the shells. This will be important for the next step. Roasting causes the water within the beans to boil puffing out the shell in much of the same way as a popcorn kernel expands. 
the puffed up or puffed out shell is then easier to remove from the nib now comes the step of winnowing once the beans have been roasted we need to remove the shell from the nib the shell is papery crunchy and doesn't contribute any flavor to the final product as soon as roasted beans have cooled they are cracked open in a continuous crushing plant a powerful current of air uses the different specific gravity of the components to blow the broken shells away from the broken cocoa particles then comes grinding after the winnowing is completed we are now left with a pile of pure nib we can now grind it into chocolate the nib bases are grinded into a liquid known as cocoa liquor the grinding process separates the cocoa nibs into their constituent parts that is cocoa butter and cocoa powder now comes the one of the most important process in chocolate making that is conching in order to bring the taste of the basic chocolate liquor to the peak of perfection and to make it flow readily another stage in refining is called for conching conches were originally long stone troughs in which the ground chocolate was pounded around and around at a temperature of 86 degree fahrenheit often for several days at a time modern rotatory conches reduce the process to only a few hours and can handle for larger quantities than the old stone conches in the first stage dry conching the moisture content of the liquor is reduced to less than 1% at the same time unwanted volatile flavors evaporate and a soft film of cocoa butter envelops the particles of the solids after approximately 10 hours the liquor is liquefied by adding cocoa butter and it is then conched even more vigorously in order to obtain a really homogeneous substance this stage can last up to 4 hours to achieve the desired quality 3 hours before conching ends more cocoa butter is added together with an emulsifier lecithin which makes the chocolate flow more readily improving its pouring quality now we talk about tempering at this point we only need to solidify the chocolate and then sell it unfortunately this is rather more easily said than done we still need to pass through the most technically demanding steps of the chocolate process that is tempering the three basic steps of tempering a chocolate are melting cooling and rewarming a full understanding of tempering requires a significant knowledge of the chemistry of chocolate on the most basic level tempering is necessary because the particles that make up a chocolate bar can arrange themselves in many different ways the different arrangements of the chocolate particles on a molecular level create different physical properties of the final chocolate on a much larger scale chocolate with the correct molecular arrangements is dark brown glossy and makes a satisfying snap when broken chocolate with an incorrect molecular arrangement is lighter in color and will crumble when broken instead of snapping mistempered chocolate will also exhibit an unsightly white coating that is called fat bloom one more process in the manufacturing of chocolate includes molding the liquid chocolate is poured into molds and cooled once the bars are cooled they are wrapped in the inner wrapper to keep the chocolate fresh for 12 to 24 months they are then labeled packed in cases and stacked on pallets ready to be shipped to and to be eaten now let's talk about the types of chocolate the first chocolate we'll talk about is curvature curvature denotes a coating chocolate with a high cocoa butter content usually 32 to 39% useful for making chocolate candies decorations and ultra smooth glazes the higher percentage of cocoa butter promotes the flow of melted tempered chocolate enabling the pastry chef to create thin chocolate coatings or decorations that have a good snap when set curvature is available for any type of chocolate white or dark compound chocolate is less expensive and it includes vegetable oils and fats it does not require any tempering sometimes there is no cocoa butter involved in making compound chocolate white chocolate 
White chocolate is made from cocoa butter, contains no cocoa solids and hence lacks the characteristic chocolate flavor. Sugar, vanilla, milk solids and lecithin are added to cocoa butter to create white chocolate. Milk chocolate Milk chocolate contains at least 12% milk solids and 10% chocolate liquor. The sweetest of the chocolates, it is also the most popular plain eating chocolate. Milk chocolate also contains lecithin, vanilla and sugar. Bittersweet and semi-sweet chocolate. Both must contain at least 35% chocolate liquor. Sugar, added cocoa butter, lecithin and vanilla are other typical ingredients. Strangely, there is no official distinction between the two chocolates. Some assume the bittersweet is less sweet than semi-sweet, but one company's semi-sweet may be less sweet than the another's bittersweet. Unsweetened chocolate, also called bitter and baking chocolate, is pure chocolate liquor. It must contain 50 to 58 percent of cocoa butter. Depending on the brand, other flavorings such as vanilla or salt may be present. Single origin chocolate. They are made with cocoa beans of the same variety. Its flavor and aroma may vary year by year. These are very expensive chocolates. Organic chocolate. Organic chocolate is made with such plants that grow in a natural habitat. The flavorings are also organic. Kosher chocolate. Kosher chocolate is similar to the Jewish food laws known as kosher. And the last is sugar free chocolate. It uses sugar in the form of maltitol. It is famous among people with dietary food requirements. Let's now discuss the melting of chocolate or how we can melt chocolate. The two most common methods used for melting chocolate are number one on a double boiler and number two in a microwave. There are machines also which can be used for melting the chocolate. Now we'll discuss about tempering and the cooling of chocolate. Tempering. Tempering is heating and cooling chocolate to stabilize it for making candies and for confections. It gives chocolate a smooth glossy finish, keeps it from easily melting on your fingers and allows it to set up beautifully for dipped and chocolate covered treats. The basic features of shine and snap is provided to the chocolate through tempering. Chocolate also faces one of the fault that is chocolate bloom. Chocolate bloom is either of two types. One of whitish coating that can appear on the surface of chocolate that is known as fat bloom that is caused by changes in the fat crystals in the chocolate. And the other is sugar bloom that is due to the crystals formed by the action of moisture on the chocolate. The methods of tempering chocolate includes the tabletop method, the injection method, microwave method and the machine method. Chocolate is used for many purposes that includes the creating of the molds with chocolate or coating of the products or various baked products for enrobing for casting, for garnishes, for making structures and show pieces of chocolate, for piping the chocolate or for making plastic chocolate. Tools and equipments that are used during handling of chocolate are tempering machine, molds, dipping forks, chocolate comb and scrappers, chocolate shaving machine, transfer sheets, spray guns, chocolate guitar, etc. The most important step is the storage of the chocolate. Chocolate should be well wrapped and kept in a cool, well ventilated area and not in refrigerator. The ideal temperature of storing of chocolate is 12 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius with humidity less than 70%. Leftover melted chocolate should be plastic wrapped and stored in a room temperature. Ready-made Chocolate products should be stored separately as it absorbs strong flavor from other foods. A detailed content on the steps and processes like conching, tempering, roasting, 
and various methods of tempering chocolate will be discussed in the next part of the video please refer to the second part of this video for more details thank you so much for listening